and uh welcome everybody back to the test zone we are at gamescom oh no we're not at gamescom are we we're not at gamescom are we guys and uh welcome everybody back to the test zone. how's everybody we're doing today gamescom. oh no we're not at gamescom are we we're not at gamescom are we guys stand by how's everybody doing today all right i copied you there cosmic how we doing now can you guys hear me okay Hear you? It's just a commercial had no audio. Uh, it should be okay now. At least I hope it will be. <laughs> Hopefully, I fixed whatever the problem was. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Archie. Archie, you there? Uh, is he there? We're not hearing you, Arch. Uh oh, we've got an audio issue here. Cosmic, I can hear you. All right, fans, you guys got to tell us. Uh, Rear Intruder, I see you hear me. Cosmic, can you give me a test? Testing. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, oh, three. Oh, there's Archie there now. Okay, we got him now. Okay, how you doing, Arch? Uh-oh, he disappeared again. Archie, we had you for a second, then you disappeared. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Archie's audio went out for us for a second. Um, hmm, that's weird. Okay, uh, well, the there you are. Is, I hear you now. It's okay. When I turn, We're, whatever you're doing, keep it there. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Griffin, they say they can hear you and Archie okay, but my audio's low. Okay. Turn, and Archie, you're good. So, Cosmic, let's see if we can get you up a little bit. <laughs> Hold on, guys. My audio's low because they don't want to hear me anyway. <laughs> okay, Cosmic, give them a one, two, three test. We'll see what they say now. Test one, two, three, three, two, one. All right. How does Cosmic sound sound now, guys? Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. He said, "Turn both of them up." Archie is low as well. Okay, hold on, stand by. All right, Archie, can you give him a test, please? Test testing one, two, one, two. Compared to mine, okay. Let me pull mine back some. Testing one two one two. All right, Montoya, don't start no stuff. <laughs> All right, Cosmic, can you give us a test one more time too? Test one two three one two three. Okay. If you two guys, I don't know if you guys have mics that you can bring a little closer to you. That would be helpful because I've got you almost maxed on my end. Okay, again, good morning, everybody. Hello, all you testies and all of our favorite Star Citizen friends out there. This is Griffin Gaming, and uh, we are back with another uh, edition of the Test Zone. And um, this is a special edition, guys. We are uh, actually going to do a Gamescom uh, edition for 2017 for Star Citizen 3.0. And I know a lot of people are probably saying, well, a lot of other streamers and people did it last week right but we're doing it a week later because we're different we don't want to do it the day of we want to do ours after it's kind of set and what do you want to call it cosmic uh it's kind of settled with us a little bit a week later maybe yeah people have had time to discuss it a bit digest right that's the word digest right it. That's and, it. and now we're going to regurgitate how about that <laughs> <laughs> okay so archie um we what did you think of gamescom what would you think of it oh his audio's acting up again I don't know what's going on with Archie's audio. Arch, give me a test. Yes. Okay, there you are. Okay, what did you uh, think of Gamescom? I'm telling you, the when I saw, I I I, testing I, my my Discord. It's, it's okay. You're it's okay. You're okay now. Just go ahead and tell us about Gamescom. You're good. Go ahead. Uh -oh. Okay. My uh. Yeah. Well, when I saw that Idris, ah, uh, ah, uh, I had a moment. I had a moment. And you own an Idris, or you own an Idris, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Just one though, right? You only have one. You know, you said you have multiple just ships. One. Just you, one of each. Okay, Cosmic. Have you got an Idris? Yes, I do. No, it's Cosmic. Have one. Absolutely not. <laughs> And the reason is those people need crew members, and I'm a crew member. Ah, okay, okay, awesome, awesome. Yes, it was glorious. Thing. 
Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, guys, we're going to jump into it. Uh, our show today is going to be highlighting just certain segments of Gamescom. We're not going to go through the whole thing because you guys know that the whole video was like almost two hours long. Uh, so we're just going to grab some things that we thought were really important to highlight. And then, of course, we're going to kind of maybe even do a little bit of commenting about the different ships that we saw because this was the first time we saw so many ships being displayed uh, at one time. So we're going to have a little bit of conversation about that. If you guys want to throw anything at us in test in the in the chat, please do. We're going to try to monitor that, and if there's any questions or thoughts you have, we may even highlight that as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and and jump into it. Uh, before, yeah, go ahead, Cosmic. Go ahead. Before you jump in, are you going to post up? That, oh uh, yes, thank you. Thing, yes. That's why Cosmic is here. Let's take a quick look at this. Um, Many of you guys know that each week uh, we look. We, they used to give us a weekly schedule, um, and they reduced it. They got rid of the, the long, like bar graph schedule, and started showing us something a little bit different. It's on screen now. So, Cosmic, could you talk about it just real quick and kind of give us an update? Yep. Give me a sec. All right. For those of you who have been following this, and I know it's every one of you, you're all concerned about it. You'll notice that the count went up. But to me, the, part, the important part was the blockers didn't go up. Uh, the critical went up a little bit. But I've been, I've been reading the thing carefully today. And yeah, there's legitimate reasons why this can't go out to ETF, to any of the testers. The game has changed so drastically. I'm, I'm sure you're all aware of this, but I'll, I'll remind you anyway. You can't even put this out to Evocati testers unless the base economy works now. They have to be able to complete a mission to get paid, to get repaired, to get refueled, and all of that stuff. The vast majority of the criticals and blockers affect that stuff. Uh, good examples are uh, one of the major bugs right now is on one of the missions you go to get an item, and when you get there, it's in the middle of an asteroid. Well, you're not going to be able to complete the mission, therefore you're not going to get your money. Uh, if it's Miles Eckhart, he might think you're a doofus and can't complete it. There's a lot of other very odd ones, and you've seen some of these uh, on Gamescon. It crashed, and they, it, but that guy crashed the desktop. There was a major problem that they fixed where every time you come out of Quantum Jump, the pilot of the ship would get transported back to where he started. Another one was every time he got out of the seat, it would transport him back to where he started. One of the major blockers right now is you can't you can't land a ship at Lefsky right now, but they're working on it. Uh, yeah, I think they'll get all these done within the next week or two, two at the most. They're making good progress, and as you saw on, I think it was Burnout, they call it, one of the guys was showing you how he was fixing the elevator, and he mentioned that the easiest way would be to raise the floor, but if he did that, he'd have created like 20 or 30 more bugs throughout the system. So he just put a little step platform and that worked. So that's what all this is. You, you can't even go to Evocati now unless they're able to, to do the basic functions of the economy. Otherwise, Evocati testers would be done in 30 minutes. They'd be out of fuel, out of ammo. They wouldn't be able to do anything. So that's the reason. The game has changed. It, it's actually the game now, you see. And, and so the basic has to work. On top of all that, I can understand their point. Why put it to Evocati and be inundated with all of the bugs that they find when you got you already know about major blockers and criticals? You got to get them fixed first. They already know about that stuff. Right. They don't need us to tell them about it. Right. You but, know, I was thinking about something that uh, Disco said the other day um, when they were asking about why the Dragonfly and the Aquila uh, weren't seen. Uh, in the in the live play, they were saying he said that they, they had it running and then there were some issues that came up. Um, but he said something that was important. He said that, you know, Star Citizen is made up of a hundred different things, and individually, they may work together. But once you combine them, then that's when they start to find out where the conflicts rise. And so, you know, when we look at the schedule, when we see that weekly schedule, and it shows all the things that they've completed, but then you look at all the things that need to be done, you realize that there's a lot of stuff that, you know, that is being brought together but those bugs can still arise, and they want to try and get as much of that out of the way so that by the time it gets to Evocati, you guys don't have to deal with a lot of that. Yeah, in chat, we have a question. Rear Intruder wants to know if the Alpha is unplayable or if it's just not up to scratch for, Evo for the Avocados. Mm -hmm. The answer to you, Rear Intruder, is 
probably 80% of it is playable. The rest of it is not playable for the reasons I just mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. The base economy is not functioning properly. Okay, you have to be able to complete missions. The, at the kiosk, you have to be able to carry cargo, you have to be able to do this stuff. And if it doesn't work, because of persistence, because the persistence does work, you see, you can't continue for very long. Now, the other comment in here is Montoya blames Cosmic for the delay. Montoya is absolutely <laughs> right as the glorious leader always. Well, blame Cos me. <laughs> yeah, we get to blame you. <laughs> Okay, well, guys, we're going to go and uh, get ready to go to our commercial break and uh, take a look at another wonderful ship that we know many of you own. Uh, it's called the Dragonfly. Archie, how many Dragonflies you got? How many? Uh-oh, I didn't see you. We're not hearing your audio again. I, look, you said 15. Is that what you said? Try your audio again. Oh, s seven? Holy smoke. All right, we're going to try and figure out what's up with Archie's audio. I don't know why he keeps going in and out. He was good earlier, and for some reason or other, we've lost him. But uh, we're going to take a look at this commercial, and then we'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Uh, Archie's going to be resetting his Discord, guys, so give him a second. Um, but we are going to kind of jump right into it. Cosmic uh, the Dragonfly, um, we saw it previously, um, a demonstration done with it before. Um, and it's kind of weird that they said now it wasn't working, but it was working earlier. Do you remember them talking about that? Yeah, uh... And, and to be honest, I, I love the Dragonfly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know everybody's in love with the Nox. It goes real fast and all that. Mm -hmm. I like the Dragonfly because you can put cargo on the back or you can put a guy on the back with a gun like you just saw. Yeah. I don't know what all the problems are with the Dragonfly right now. I know that it's probably the same one with the Nox, mm. where the Nox lays down on the ground, okay? And it's, you got to... When you go to get on it, it mm -hmm. gets up and all that. Oh. I think that's probably pretty much it. And since it's not in 3.0 at this point they're going to fix it before they put it in there because they got to fix the knocks as well gotcha 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 it's it's stuff like that that they're trying to get it working real good for us okay archie you back up i don't know you are back up we can hear you, you. Are back awesome up. he's back up awesome awesome we got to have our archie with us okay well we're going to get yeah. started guys we're going to jump if on I'm, in sure go cosmic if i may the people watching this right now and we have 15 again here so to speak Griffin had the problem earlier. Archie just had it. We recently had an update to Discord. So if any of you experience problems like this, and especially when you go in-game, go into your desktop icon, check properties, make sure it still says run as admin. Yep. Because every time Discord gives us a big update, it zeroes that back out again. Okay? Thank you. That's a this has been a public service announcement. <laughs> Thank you there, Cosmic. <laughs> All right, guys. Here we go. The first segment uh, that we are going to take a look at has to do with the Moby Glass. You guys know that there was a huge update with the Moby Glass, and Chris is going to kind of talk about it. Um, just so you guys know, we're going to talk over this. So, you know, even though you hear Chris in the background, any, we'll listen, but from time to time we may make comments. So there it is right there on screen. Personally, I find this awesome. I've been waiting for this a long time. See, mine doesn't do that because mine is the first <laughs> edition. <laughs> you got the, the the early generation. Um, yeah. In the middle, what our heart rate is, and uh, there's a you know we have this thing called the stamina system that we're introducing. I am glad that he did a breakdown on what each little thing was, the icons and everything, and especially talking about the atmospheric stuff. Yeah, this is going to be a crucial point because it tells you your O2 level. 
it also yeah. tells you your stamina and for those of you, you know, that aren't terribly interested in all that you're going to have to do it anyway at least once or twice a week you're going to have to have your character and your npc get something to eat something to drink lay down in bed take a rest and you're going to have to keep an eye on your oxygen and if you noticed if you listen to the streamers uh, Meyer Test, by the way, made a point of telling us that these emergency stations, and he took us in and showed us one, they're scattered all over the moons, all three of these moons. So if your oxygen level gets to get low, you need to get yourself to one of those emergency stations and just simply walk inside. Once you're inside, your O2 will start to charge back up again. And then you can get out and fiddle around until you start running low, you head for another emergency shelter. Or if you're near one of the outposts, go inside of there and wait. And don't forget, if you get a puncture in your suit. Yeah. So the game is actually starting now, the very basics of it, but it's it's no longer the, the silly stuff we've been doing. You're going to have to pay a lot more attention in the future. So here on the bottom of where all our apps are, so the first app on the top left, but this Moby glass is just awesome. Now, the contract manager is where being able to put di different clothes on. Uh, you'll be able to put on if you base suit, but you like that helmet, you'll be able to mix and match eventually, or you know whatever you want to do. Uh, it, it's really awesome. It's cool. So that's a that's a massive massive undertaking. I think we had about 16 missions. That's the um, uh, your bank account. 3.0. We have. A yeah, we don't know if that's placeholders or. Hopefully, they're going to start us with an adequate amount of money, or, or you're not going to be out there very long. Can be combined in different combinations, and there's a large amount of procedural missions. So literally, uh, I'm impressed with all this uh, technology. Do in 3.0. For anybody. For anybody who hasn't noticed when he's showing you this, when he gets to the mission part, we're all concentrating on Miles Eckhart, and so is he. But if you notice, the comma rays are still on the mission. They just call them something else now. The PI mission's still there, and so are the ICC missions. So those are easy ways to go make money because we're already familiar with them, okay? And on top of that, we can also have some missions that will be created where there can be Intruder, no, I missed that. I didn't notice uh, Rear Intruder mentions about Sandy and uh, Bender both having on the same type of watch that looked like the Moby Glass. No, that's pretty cool. I, it, they looked close, but I didn't notice they looked like a Moby thing. I have to go back and look at it. And yeah, that's another thing too, guys. Don't forget that they mentioned that there are two versions of the Moby Glass. There's the civilian version, which is what you're seeing now, and then there's a military version that allows you to go over your armor. Actually, there's going to be a third version. Oh, really? There will be an explorer Moby Glass for explorers. Oh, cool. Yeah. Just like there will be an explorer space suit. Right. <laughs> close, Archie, close. <laughs> Very nice, Archie. Um, so, besides the, the various jobs that we can select here, there can also be offers that we're getting from uh, individuals. It's pretty cool that your missions and offers and things uh, come through that. Point zero will just be from the game and NPCs, but going forward, players will be able to also put missions up Is this going to have the comm you know, section in it as well? This particular uh, section? Uh, coming up, not yet. So here we have, a you mean the comms for VOIP or on the mobile? Yeah. Oh yeah, it'll be up a little bit later. So he is one of the two mission givers in 3.0, and uh, he says another job's popped up. Thought you'd be a good fit, so we probably should go and talk to him about it. We will, we will accept that. Uh, and then if we have a mission, ah, this is where you can uh, reject or accept it, the offer. We have an ship, and then <laughs> you want a space trucker model, huh? That's pretty then good. There you go, the cry astro stuff. That's uh, pretty interesting the way they laid that out. I don't know. Are we going to have Twitch in the future? Over here, the next tab will be the vehicle works. It's currently called Live Works AR, but this is you'll be able to modify and change out equipment on your ship very much like you can in the Arena Commander app at the moment. 
Um, we also have a journal, although we haven't really done anything at the moment. Glenn is just beginning. Uh, and then uh, you're talking about Twitch TV on it. A lot of backers are planning on broadcasting things. from things uh, like a Reliant and, uh, or specifically a Herald, it, and you but, uh, will be able to watch that on it. your multifunction uh, displays. Or, for example, you got that big display in the back of a Mustang Beta, stuff like that. Your screens, you will be able to call up the news. Here's something that's coming up, guys, to talk about. Was they give us the idea of showing us how we can change clothes now uh, by using the Mobi, which is uh, something I didn't expect to come up. Very fashionable to go outside. Well, yeah, you, you have to put individual and, yeah, items on on, on, on your body now. Yeah, but I just didn't expect that it was going to be through the Mobi. I'm, I'm kind of, so I heard someone mention that, you know, you have to wonder if there's any immersion breaking. That's where we're going to stop there on the video right now, guys. If there's any immersion breaking with that, because some people said they actually like the going to the locker thing and putting on clothes. So I, I kind of get that to a certain degree, but at the same time, I do like the functionality of having that as an option, that if you want to do something very quickly, you could just use your Mobi to do it. I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh... Yeah, I'm twofold on it. I like the idea of the locker, but you never saw anything. The door just didn't bang <laughs> yeah. it. In. But on the other hand, the Moby you see is an all-in-one. Yeah. It's like a Swiss Army blade. You'll be able to change your weapons on your ship. You'll be able to change your cooler, your power plant, your helmet, your shoes. Yeah. So everything is on the Moby now, so it all has to work the same, and that's why the clothing is that way. But I like it because you can go through and select. Mm -hmm. Pants, and if you own six pants, you can pick which one you want. Right, it might be too cumbersome if we actually had a, like a big closet, and you went like when you yeah. go in the store right now. You know, when you go in Casaba, you do see everything, but it is actually spread out over a large area. And if you've got a pretty large wardrobe, I guess it could become, you know, how big can your closet be? You know. Right. You think we're going to have it both ways, from the locker and from the It'd be interesting if they offered it for people who want that level of immersion. I know some people will say, hey, I'm not trying to spend half my day getting my clothes out of the closet, you know. <laughs> so, you know. Genetic Predator, yeah. is, Genetic Predator is asking if we might be able to get the military <laughs> Moby Glass. My, my guess is, Genetic, that probably not, simply because the military version probably has secure channels on it. Yeah, and Genetic Predator was also the one who said, we don't need no pants. So there you go. <laughs> That's because he can't find his. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and jump to another commercial, and uh, we will be right back. Okay, we are back. I think, you know, what I'm going to do is kind of do a little counting here, because Archie, you are the, probably the person who has the biggest uh, arsenal of, of ships and equipment. I hate to even ask you, how many Ursa rovers do you have? I have two. Two? Okay. Now, are those two because you bought them separate, or are they, are they were they a part of like a Carrick package or what, or, you know, one of the ship packages? Well, wait a minute. Does it come with the uh, Aquila? Yep. Aquila gets one, yep. So I have two Aquilas, I have the uh, Karak, and I also have a spare rover, so that's four of them. Okay. So that's three of them. The Karak comes with the Lynx rover. Oh, yeah, yeah. pardon him, oh, right? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the Lynx is much bigger. The rover's and it, a rover. <laughs> the Lynx is much bigger, and it will be decked out for scientific exploration planet side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good okay. stuff. Thank you. Good stuff. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, so we're going to jump up a little bit into the Gamescom presentation. We were just looking at the Moby. We're going to jump down uh, into the bar area uh, where Chris starts uh, talking about How something. About that snow, though. Oh, the snow was gorgeous. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, we're in the bar now. I had to talk to that guy. 
And this is where Chris introduced something that most of us didn't expect, so let's take a look. VOIP. What do you think of my look? Okay, so hold on guys. So one thing that we're gonna uh, show here, and this is a feature that um, we've uh, put into the game. It's not gonna be in 3.0, but it will be soon afterwards. Uh, two things, one, which is... Uh, just stare at me. <laughs> VIP. Um, and the other is what we call... That face is a great <laughs> smile. Face over IP. So, so hold up, guys. Anyway, so we have this mission to do. We have to get a so what did you guys think about this? Were you guys expecting this whole voiceover face thing, everything? Are you, are you I, I can't wait. I was expecting it, but not uh, this. All right, so hang on a I didn't know if they, they had made this much progress this early. Guys, well, it's going to be after 3.1, right? Oh, yeah, but they're still thing. making okay, good progress so, on it. I didn't right, know they were that far advanced on it. It's, it's like this. Melissa, who's down in the basement, um, as another yeah. player. And we have Guys, I'm getting yeah. a message that my audio is acting up, so uh, bear with me. I'll be right back. What we call base over IP, which is combination of... Yeah, the, the thing I like about it is being able to... Uh, so well, two things. We First like, of all, uh, we'll all start looking different, and that's going to be... That's going to make gameplay a lot more fun, at least for me. Because I'm tired of everybody looking the same out in the verse. Right. So that's so, going to be nice. Like saying, and the other part is being able to chat with each you other, you know, in, in game it's rather than in Discord and stuff. And being able to have, have stuff, that, that's going to be really what awesome. You, it's going to change a lot. Genetic Predator says that it was announced back in 2013. Yes, it was. They actually, back on an old wingman's hangar, they actually told us about this. Uh, that they were looking into okay. it, and it was in the very, very rough stages back then, so, four years ago. Uh, and I knew they'd been now, working on it, I just didn't know how Melissa, far along they'd got, so I'm really impressed come forward talking that they're this and far then along. Go to Glenn's right. Is it going to be a specific type of camera that we could use, or we have to buy... That we could use any camera? They did say that you could use any good web camera, however, because of lighting in the room you're in and all the rest of it, that particular camera this company has is a high-res, so specific notice, illumination uh, so type it's, camera it's to sort of to work. So they're trying to sell you that, and, you know, and you know you're going to pay more for it because it's got CIG logos all over it. Right. You're going to pay an extra hundred bucks for that probably. But a good webcam will work absolutely. Especially if you control the lighting in the room. Uh, what do you guys think about this thing with the dynamic audio uh, so where moving further away and moving so left to right? It's oh man, it's awesome. Uh, the world. If it's the left, it's the, you know, it, it, just, it, the left, it just makes right gameplay so much right, more interesting, more fun. Sound, you'd hear it uh, you. it's, it's what uh, we all waited you know, for and wanted. It's, it's coming and we're all going to get it eventually. Shift the calm. So that's part one. And the other part, which you've sort of seen a little bit that's happening here, is what do you think, Arch? once we put that into the game, we uh, sort of realize that if you don't that's, have that's the a Roger. face and the, uh, you know, your lips <laughs> moving when you're talking, not only that, to try and sort of see more of the emotion, it feels really weird in a game that has the fidelity that starts, isn't it? So we've been working with a company called Faceware to put... The part, I'm, the part I'm most interested in for me personally, game, so we can I'm not that interested in using we, this for we you, have a, we have but I am interested in the track IR thing, we have this and I'm really interested right now in that, that track hat. It's under $50 American the USD, so, and you know, with all the new multifunction displays and your cockpit and all the rest of it, personally, I think track IR is going to be extremely useful and fun out in the game, and if you use gimbal weapons and stuff like that. To me, that's a priority well over this, but yeah, this is cool. Yeah, I think the facial stuff just kind of helps from the immersion aspect. Um, you know, it's. It, I think I, you and I were talking before, and I said, um, if my NPCs are talking to me and I'm seeing their mouths move and facial expression, but if I'm talking to a real person like you or Archie and your face is static, for me, it's a little immersion breaking. It's not terribly, because we're used to it now, but it just kind of adds to it. But I agree with you, the tracking 
is going to be great because just looking around in your cockpit is going to be, you know, great. You'll be able to just look at it. Yeah. Rear Intruder has a question. The nice thing with the tracking here is that it's really, really smart. We don't have to. I'll read it off to us. You'll recognize your face, and you just have to do one calibration. See, I'm on. I'm unsure how much will the camera be. It works with standard. And can I use it as a tracking, IR typing, type thing on other games? The answer to the second part is yes, it will function as track IR because that's how track IR works. The first question is, we don't uh, know the price, but AV, because which, it's logoed with RSI and CIG, <laughs> it'll be like those joysticks they were going to offer us at one point. They'll be cost a little more, obviously. Like but yeah, it's it's new technology. Okay, it's state-of-the-art. It's now going to cost. To How much? Your, your we haven't got a clue. Tracking. Okay, so now on top of that, if... So, I definitely gonna get me one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can always so, see glorious so leader Montoya out there going wink, wink. Where, where, where is this he? tracking? Is this some tracking's pretty amazing? Yeah, that the uh, track also, IR I think is gonna really make the game awesome. Without having to move the mouse, it's pretty good. Uh, okay, should we? Now, would it help out with the mission? pilot? Yeah, because, oh, absolutely. Yeah, all you got to do is move your head to see other screens and look around out the windows and all that good stuff. It, it absolutely will. Mm -hmm. It's going to compete with all these other uh, commercial uh, specialized for tracking your movement. Well, if you buy this thing, this thing is made for the FOIP, but you can use it for track IR. And that's right. what I'm saying. You, you, if you don't want the FOIP, if you just want track IR, you can get it for as cheap as under fifty dollars USD by buying the thing called Track Hat, and it works exactly. really well. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the sensors that you put on your hat and on your headphone and ah, track. rear intruders asking a question: Will it work I, with hats? Probably, <laughs> but eyeglasses. We don't know, but I th what from what they've told us, if you keep the lighting down and you don't have reflection off your eyeglass lenses, then it will probably work, yes. Yeah. And Standard's got a question. Will Griffin be giving away any fancy FOIP camera in future streams? Uh, there's always a possibility. Never say never, but I can guarantee you that I will talk about it. How about that? So <laughs> I'm not sure if we'll be doing any giveaways, but who knows? You never know what might happen. You know, I, we won't even be on sale for months. Yeah, I know. He's just pulling my chain, believe me. <laughs> anyway, guys, we're going to go to commercial, then we're going to head back for our next one. And this commercial is something I think a lot of people will be interested in, so stand by. That is nice. Uh, okay, Archie, time for the question again. Uh, do you own a prospector? Two. Two. Two prospectors. One for me and one for Cosmic. Okay. Roger that. That sounds good. Uh, Archie, you're fired. You didn't say three. Okay. Uh. <laughs> uh, I have to squeeze my pocket. I'll get a third one for you. <laughs> well, fortunately, I've got one, so you're okay. You're in good ground still. Um, anyway, yeah, the Prospect is a great ship. It's one of our first ships that starts bringing us toward uh, economy and being able to make money, uh, along with other things like cargo and stuff. So a lot of people are excited. 
um, about the Prospector. It's a one-man ship, uh, but it'll help us, you know, start getting your business together if you want to be a miner. So it'll be pretty cool. And Ben Lesnick told us that between now and the end of the year is what he told us. There'll be at least a couple more ships coming out. They will be working class utility midsize, and they're working on things like a midsize reclaimer and a midsize Orion. Oh. So, if oh. anybody interested in the prospector, you might want to wait for that. A midsize mining ship would be really awesome. Absolutely, that would be great. Archie, would you buy one? Uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> There's your ship, Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I well, mean, I have the Orion. I have two prospectors. I gotta get me the medium one. Yep, absolutely. Very cool. All right. Well, let's go to the next segment here. Uh, we're gonna talk about Levski a little bit. Uh, Archie, what did you think about this the first time you saw what it looked like outside of Levski? What, what was your impressions of that? Oh God, it's just like my uh, the city that I was uh, working at the other day. <laughs> So let's go out I had to go and pick up some 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 materials and uh, deliver some goods for the uh, for the guys. They work hard over there. Okay, Cosmic, what did you think? Because this is you know we've, this is another version of Lesky that we're seeing with more detail, right? Yeah, uh, the things I noticed right off the bat is it is infinitely larger than what we saw last year because it didn't have the parking lot and all that stuff. Right. So it's a lot larger. The other thing I noticed was I keep getting lost in there when I'm watching them run around. Uh, it's it's really humongous. The other thing, I and I waited for tonight to bring this up to people to see if anybody else has a thought on this. The two people that took the mission are already in the station. They go down to Miles Eckhart, they, t they go ahead and take the mission. And then after they take the mission, they say, you know, we ought to call up our buddy and see if he's available to give us yeah. a ride. Why are they at Levski without a ship? And they don't even know if their buddy's available before they take the mission. Am I the only one that's wondering about this? Yeah, well, Cosmic, come on. You know it had to be a little scripted. Come on now, come in chat. Am I the only person that, that, that hadn't got that figured out yet? Well, maybe they just didn't want to take their ship. <laughs> yeah, but why would you take a mission if you don't know you got a ship? <laughs> ah, that's true. That's true. So here, just before this, on this scene, they were showing the um, Moby again, and, and, they, and Chris did the little demonstration of what happens when you take the helmet off. And he was showing that the oxygen levels of that particular character was going down. He would die, he said, if he had left it off a few more minutes, a few more seconds. Yeah. This is our, our second time that we're getting a chance to see the Ursa rover, too. Um, that rover's really nice. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And as you mentioned earlier, Cosmic, we, we saw greater interior detail as well as exterior detail here at Levski. And this is the part you were talking about, being able to communicate uh, with yeah, people. You see, you see he's using track IR there. Did you see that? Yes, yes. And this is the part I love. This is, oh man, this is awesome. Being able to communicate ship to ship or ship to ground or eventually on the big ships, internal like a, an intercom. The captain yeah, can talk to the engineer, yeah, or whatever. You're on your star ferry, you can talk to the guy refueling the ship and see him on there and talk to him. This is awesome technology. This is, this is wonderful. Rear and Treader, we're going to talk about that, which you just mentioned a second ago, because I think that's important. So we'll come right back to that. What's that? Read Rear's uh, comment. You'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, when we get to the crash, we'll talk about that. To have video comms between players in different ships, different locations, as well as the holographic stuff that we show. This, this is what blew my mind, too. Watching this rover leave the base and seeing how large this thing was. It's huge. Yeah, this is a big base. Originally, it was very small, so I'm glad they expanded it like this. And no, that's not a monorail over there. That's what they brought the war out when it was a working mine. <laughs> yes, good yeah, point, that's Cosmic. The, uh, the moving, uh, what they call the that? tram, the transport, the ore. Yeah. On Reddit, though, everybody got excited and thought it was a monorail. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's not Disneyland. It's not Disneyland. It was a little less arid. For those of you who watched uh, the streams on GamesCon, I was impressed by the uh, the turret on this rover too. They used it a lot. Yeah. And I was man, that was awesome. Yeah. 
Now this was awesome. This was pretty cool. This is that, that's the main defense of the rover. Then. That's one of your favorite ships there. Archie yeah. coming in. She's coming in. And before it lands, a comment I will make is that guy obviously already has a rover on board. That's why he's putting them on the cargo bay. With. The other, the other thing I noticed is the rover fills the IKEA's cargo hold 100%. If there's a cargo container on there, you ain't getting the rover on. Yeah. Nope. But what it tells you is, with an empty cargo hold, you can carry two rovers, can't you? Mm -hmm. So where's the, where's the first rover at? Forward of that cargo area, it has its own elevator drop down from its own little area. Oh, so you'll be able to carry two, but well, yeah. no cargo. Yeah, but it comes with a rover that's in front of that cargo area, and then that little snub fighter behind the cargo area. Yep. I also noticed the ramp in the back that comes down. Did you notice that? Yes. That's because if you noticed ooh, two or three weeks ago on the production schedule, one of the problems they had with uh, the ships like the Constellation and a couple others was the ramp didn't come the whole way down mm. in your hangar. To the, you had to jump to get in there, right? Right. And the best way for them to correct it was just to put that other little ramp flat. Uh, That's how they it. Makes sense. Yep. Uh, they're gonna uh, they're, they're gonna have to do that on other ships because not all not all it's the done. ships have it. Oh, it's, it's done. done. Yeah. I was a little nervous about how close this rover was to the front. <laughs> did you yeah. notice? Did you notice later? And, and Griffin will show this later. The Idris landing. When the Idris landed, its ramp had that little thing at the end too. Did yeah. You yep. Mm, makes it's been added to all the ships. But why is it that, sh well, when we come up with it, I'll, I'll make a comment. Look how neat it fits in that cargo bay. Yeah, it fills it, doesn't it? Yeah, Ops Chief, you're right. Um, I think that one of the things Chris wants to do is make it so that we don't, we no longer play games thinking of it from a solo effort, but that, you know, it is a team thing when we're doing stuff. Uh, you got to rely on your buddies and your other game players with, with some basic things, such as maybe the way you bring in a ship or where you park a vehicle. Um, and it just kind of makes it even better for the whole immersion and uh, multi-crew aspect of the game. Yeah, in the military, we use a ground ground guide. Yeah. And while you're on that subject, Griffin, you linked me earlier a, a really good video. Now, I don't think the guy's a testy, but Montoya will overlook it this one time. <laughs> the guy did a really, really good video about piracy yeah. out in 3.0 and beyond. And it's excellent to watch that. Yeah. Because even if you're not going to be a pirate, there's good information in there and it's all pretty accurate. It's you know, he's he's thinking about what you'll do, how you can do different things. And because you're bringing that up, can you give them the link to that video so that if they want to watch it, they can? Riff? Yeah, I'll try to post it. Uh, it is it excellent. It tells you that even pirates are going to have to work multi-team, multi-crew, multi-squadron, multi-ship. And that's the purpose of, of Star Citizen. It's not something you can just go out and do by yourself and survive very long. And even pirates have to, to hey, cut your losses and run or, or share the profit and take what you can get. You know, because that's the way it is now. It's it's worth watching it. It's an excellent video. Yeah, Montoya's buying all the NPCs, Jolly. You just send him the bill. <laughs> See, all this multi-crew aspect is another reason to belong to Test Squadron, Best Squadron, okay? I agree. This was amazing, too. Um, again, we're seeing in real time, um, as you can see, le the uh, base is actually shrinking behind as Levski is virtually can't even see it. And Griffin's put the link to the piracy video. When you copy and paste that when you get a chance it's really worth watching even if you don't want to be a pirate you pick up good tips about various things but mostly 
how the game is going to progress for not only the pirates, but for the good guys. Okay, and this is the intent. It's always been the intent. So it's really a good video. It's well done. Yeah, one one, one thing is to uh, to uh, uh, go against the pirates. You have to learn how they think. You know, Montoya, I was actually glad that it crashed. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's, let's hold off on the crash point. I want to mention about the fact that Chris mentions that one of these craters that we see as they're flying over is the size of the entire map of Skyrim, uh, which gives us some perspective about the immenseness. And, and, and Cosmic, if I'm not mistaken, this isn't just an asteroid we're on. This isn't a moon, correct? No, th this it's a large is, asteroid, isn't it? This is a very large asteroid. It's right. almost planetoid size. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's actually larger than a moon because it's. If it was much larger, it'd be a planet, a planetoid. So it's very, very large. And all the asteroids around it, like Chris told you, they're very large asteroids as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 humongous. But this is what the 64-bit coding did for us, folks, okay? Before 64-bit coding, the entire area that you're playing in would be no bigger than that bubble in Arena Commander. And how many times have we hit the barrier or cursed it because as soon as you go on speed, you got to turn again? Yeah. Now, I That's know... every other game. I know that pilot is going through a lot of trouble trying to get out of the, uh, the gravitational pull of the... Uh, 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 of that little moon. If you notice also on the cockpit display when they show it, as he gains altitude, his speed goes up. Picks up, up right. And we talked to the devs about that, and they said they did not change the throttle. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. You set the throttle yeah. at whatever, 60%, and as you, the atmosphere's getting less no, dense, your ship say, speeds Mom. up. Let me cut you off for a second here, Cosmic. The, uh, this is where the jump starts. And something major happened here, guys, and we, those of us who saw it watched it. Crusaders to the right, and we get this to happen. And of course, for most of us, we froze up because we knew something was wrong. Yeah, in this case, the pilot had a crash to desktop like we all get. Oh, this is when he crashed? Yeah. The, the important part here, uh, for those of you who may not know this, the reason Chris Roberts was shocked that it didn't work, that he crashed a desktop and stuff, was the day before this, the people that were there live, you know, people just standing in line, going up, playing the game, they discovered that when you came out of Quantum Jump and the pilot got out of his seat, the pilot was teleported back to Levski. Mm, yep. And nobody had control of the ship. Now, they fixed that bug the day before this. That's why Chris thought, oh crap, did it happen again? No, he crashed the desktop. What they hadn't got fixed yet was we need to start giving the co-pilot permission right. to, to use this ship, you see. They're working on that now. Right, and, and one of the things that they had talked about was the fact that an owner of a ship would have the right to get permissions to who could fly the ship. And this is one of those cases where, whether it's built in or not, we, it didn't happen. If they did have it built in, he had not given permission. And if they hadn't got it built in, it didn't default to anybody. So when it's, Chris... It's not in yet. Right. So Chris tried to tell Melissa, can you get in the chair, the captain's seat, and can you shut the ship off and reset, restart the ship? She couldn't either. And so for those of you who didn't see it, um, they basically had to start everything over. And they had to kind of run back to the beginning of the game, run through everything, and then pick up from where they left off at. But I'm, Cosmic, I'm, uh, you mentioned this, and Rear was mentioning it earlier. I'm glad, as you said, that we did see the crash, because first of all, you highlighted the fact that it definitely proved that it was real time and not just a recording. Uh, secondly, it showed the community, the realities of where the game is in development, that everything is not fixed. If this had been a flawless demonstration, our wonderful brothers and sisters in the community would be screaming, give it to us now, give it to us now. But it showed and, us that there's still stuff that needs to be done. And it demonstrates what I said way back earlier about the blockers. Yes. You can't give it to even Eva Cotty this way because because of persistence, Eva Cotty has to buy fuel, repair ships, which means they got to complete a mission. Mm -hmm. And if you quantum jump and this happens, or the pilot gets spawned back where he left, 
Eva Cotti can't make any money, so therefore they're done playing in 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And they're done testing. So because they already know these problems exist, it, it's everybody's interest. It's in all of our best interest to let them fix these things first, then give it to Eva Cotti. Because I can promise you, them people out there in avocado land, they're going to find some more really nasty things. They're good at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're right. experts. They are experts at that stuff. Yeah. Archie, you got an Aquila too, right? You said you got two Aquilas? Hey. Holy smoke. Okay. Now, what I might do is I might convert <clears throat> one into the uh, the 300, I mean the 600. Oh, okay, okay. Well, Archie mentioned a good point, too, when he was observing them leaving, um, uh, I won't say the atmosphere, but when they were leaving from the asteroid. Uh, because there was no atmosphere, atmosphere, um, we didn't get the effect that we normally get on when we're entering into an atmosphere. And so when they get to Daymar is where they're going. Is that correct, Cosmic? Is that where they're headed to? Yes. Okay. Daymar. When we're going to Daymar, we will see that effect of entering the atmosphere and the resistance and things that are popping up. Um, but on a low-gravity planet, you don't have it as much. Uh, you know, low gravity and lack of atmosphere minimizes that. And they said that each each place you go, you, it will be different. The flight the flight uh, mechanics, not flight mechanics, is the word I'm looking for. The um, is it gravity. The air, well, I mean, the aerodynamics of flying the ship can be impacted by whatever yeah. planet or moon you're going to. So. Yeah, and on that subject, you know, 3.0 is the basic fundamental. Coming in 3.1 and 3.2, uh, 3.0 the character with spacesuits and all the good stuff right. so that you guys can get out there and have a little flirting around and have some fun. But also what you're going to get soon is the, the effects of gravity, just like stamina. If, if the moon has very low gravity, you'll be able to jump and skip a long way, just like our astronauts did on the moon. But if the moon has is very dense and has high gravity, you're going to have trouble walking around, and you better keep an eye on your oxygen level because you're going to be burning it up real quick. So, yeah, there's a lot of this stuff that's coming in 3.1 and 3.2, and it's just going to make it so much better. But 3.0 is going to get us out there, get us learning and it's the time for you to start learning about the persistence, the watching your fuel, watching things, making money first. We all want to go play. We can't wait to get out there and play and do racing and all. But if you run out of fuel, you're in trouble. <laughs> it will take you all day long to get to a refueling station. And when you get there, you better have some money. So missions are important. Yeah. Very important now. And they always will be. Whether you're a fighter jock, whether you're a whatever. You have got to make money, or you're not going to be playing this game very long. Nope. That's you're going to have to separate. crew for people. If you yeah. run out of money and your ship's damaged, you're going to be a crew member for a long time <laughs> till you make money to get all that done. I got and plenty then, of ships for crew members. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're going to have to call Archie to come in and get your fuel because you don't want to spend 12 hours to get out to the refueling station, and Archie's going to charge you triple rates. <laughs> hey, that's the way it goes. <laughs> All right. Well, look, guys, we're going to go to commercial break again. Another ship. This is a ship that a lot of people ooh, were anticipating. Ooh, yeah, this is one of my favorites. Not a lot of ooh, 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 ooh. Here we go. <laughs> look at the turret. Look at the turret. Yeah. Oh, baby, she's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Did it freeze up for you guys? Yes. Yeah. Right, let's try to start this over. Hold on, guys. Take two. Technical difficulties. As always. <laughs> Here we go. I love Star Citizen. Star Citizen loves you. You know, I never liked this ship to the day or to the day. It was just it's one of the most awesome ships out there. For the price range, this thing is one of the most versatile ships that you can have. It's a perfect starting ship for the price. 
If you only had one ship, this would be this or the Freelancer D you want. It's a great way to get started in the game. And I love the new turrets. Drake Interplanetary, and uh, you know, Cosmic, earlier you were talking about piracy, and uh, Drake kind of is the company that is known as a reputation, not necessarily uh, for providing ships to pirates, but I guess the, the company that pirates like to use, uh, uh, the Buccaneer and, uh, and uh, the, that particular one, the Cutlass, uh, they even have like little pirate names to them. Um, Archie, how many of the uh, Cutlass series ships do you have? Uh, three. Cutlass Red, Cutlass Blue, and the Black. You got one of each, huh? Yes. So is that one day you'll be a pirate and then another day you'll be a cop? Is that what the deal is? No. The black one, I'm using it as escort. Ah, okay. So you're not going to do no nefarious work is what you're saying, huh? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Would you like rumor control? Yeah, oh, yeah. Let's hear it. Yeah. Well, because of the delays with all of this, you know that the Cutlass Red and Cutlass Blue are scheduled for 3.1. However, rumor has it they're very near completion, and with the Delta Patcher, they will not be in 3.0 because they want you to get out there and test with what they have now, which is the Cutlass Black and whatever else is out there. Mm -hmm. But it might come in a 3.0 Alpha or Bravo with the Delta Patcher, your Cutlass Red and Blue. They're very near completion. They're very near ready to be given. So that might just pop into one of the one of the updates to 3.0 at some point, or they can hold them to 3.1. Who knows? Oh, that would be. That, I'll tell you. I can't wait to the Cutlass Reds out there. I know everybody loves the blue as well, but me, I can't wait to have people out there rescuing my silly hide. <laughs> Cutlass Red. Oh yeah. yeah, baby. I can't wait. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, we're gonna jump back in, guys, and pick up. Uh, this is right after the crash where we're gonna jump in here. So this is after this is the second time around guys where we're picking up at And you can see the uh, burn there at the front of the ship a little bit Yeah, that means that uh, it's going through the atmosphere I'll tell you this is just awesome technology. Yeah. They've come up with it Definitely This in my humble opinion is going to change all future games. Now, is the navigation computer going to tell the navigator at what angle to follow? I don't think so, because they, uh, he, he's coming in here burning real hot. In fact, they even mentioned to him, yeah. hey, you're kind of coming in kind of fast. I think they were a because little nervous. At that angle, I think they were going to blow up. Yeah, if he wouldn't have slowed up or, or lowered his angle, he would have. Yeah, I mean, you got to remember, he's got shields up, too. And that was another thing that came up. People were talking about the uh, the burn on the front, uh, why it wasn't in a certain pattern. But Chris and made it very clear that the reason why it's in that pattern is that what you're seeing is the, it, the atmosphere hitting against the shield, not the ship. There's the derelict. Now, isn't this awesome? We'll be doing this soon. And it's definitely worth waiting for. Most of us have waited four and five years for this, so I don't know about the rest of you, but I'll wait whatever it takes to get this experience. I've waited 30 years for this. Archie Cosmic, is it me, or do these guys land all their ships like kind of hard and rough all the time? They're really oh, bad at landing. <laughs> that's why they had to put shock absorbers on the ships because of this. What, for, for the developers? Because it ain't for us. I don't land like that. <laughs> no, I don't land like that. I, you know, I should, be a I should be a developer because the very first time I ever landed my Aurora out there on those free flight pads, uh -huh. it bounced for three minutes and landed <laughs> on its roof. So I should be a developer. <laughs> yeah. We don't have no problem landing, so like Archie says, the shock absorbers were for them. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's a good example of something Ops Chief mentioned earlier about working together, and this is a good example of it. Um, the pilot, he goes back to the bay to prepare to lower the uh, rover. Uh, Melissa, she comes down and she's outside 
and then the other guy he's getting in the rover you know so everybody's kind of doing something it's not like one person's doing everything yeah everybody has a job mm -hmm. um, remember to close the elevator work. and lock the door <laughs> yeah 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 and come back with the no no ship work. The locks. oh did you hear how that's going to work yes if the pilot says lock everything that means when you leave the ship nobody can get back in except the, the pilot mm -hmm. yeah baby that's so you the first better protect the pilot this was interesting yeah. too when the rover hung for a second that was interesting on the ground though outside the rover was down did you catch what archie said what was that if you leave the the carny and lock all the doors and the pilot gets killed ain't nobody getting back on oh the yeah board. yeah you got to protect the pilot not in 3.0 anyway but in the future you will 3.1 did you see he used the little panel I showed in my last uh, video uh, yep, yep. to open the cargo bay? Yep. I love the rover. That's really nice. Anybody in, in chat have any questions, feel free. Yeah, the, the rover has cargo space in the back there, right? Rear intruder's going to get bed sores yes. playing. <laughs> I saw him say that. I think there are going to be a lot of people taking vacation time and sick time the first few days this thing comes out. Oh, I have three months of vacation accumulated, so you know me. <laughs> oh, you know me. I, I don't have that much time, so I'll just have to... <laughs> well, lucky you. I got, I got four years before I get to that level there, Cosmic, so, uh, you know... <laughs> So you guys do know that when I'm not playing with you, if I yell union break, that means I got to go to the toilet and coffee break. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, union break. The rover really looks good. Um, you know, traversing over the different levels of terrain is pretty cool. And people here in chat, you guys, for what it's worth to you, I, I just absolutely cannot wait to get out there and play with as many of you as possible, have fun, have laughs, and help each other. Look after each other's back and keep each other alive. Making money is easy. Staying alive is the name of this game. That's what this game's all about. Keep yourself alive and keep your buddies alive. Archie, which ship is this we're looking at now, the derelict, the one that's crashed? That is the uh, crash of a caterpillar. It is indeed. And uh, and don't forget, guys, you got to get, you got to be with uh, with your weapon all the time. <laughs> By the way, the, 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 the visual effects in this game, the fire, the smoke, all that is just awesome. And on the latest progress report, you'll notice they didn't have all the new fog effects in here. Yeah. That will be in very shortly because they're implementing them as we speak right now. Ops Chief is asking a question, what will we lose or keep when 3.0 comes? Um, to answer that question, um, whenever there's a major update, um, whenever we jump from 2 point or 1 point or whatever, uh, the game basically gets wiped. So the Alpha UEC, the current money currency that we're using, which is just temporary currency, everything will get reset for everybody. But what will change is that when you log out of the game, and you come back into the game, wherever you left off at is where the game will start. Currently, we always start uh, at Port Olisar if you're a good guy, or Crimhex if you're a bad guy. Um, but if you're, for example, if you dock your ship and you had a, got into a fight and your wing was blown off, when you come back to the game, you're not going to get a new ship. That ship's going to come back with that same wing blown off. So that's what we mean by persistence. Those things will remain in the game. Yeah, until you fix them. Okay. You have uh, money. Yeah. Uh, I can't pronounce his name, Mapis, Mapiston, mm -hmm. whatever. Is Rec going to get reset? No, sir. No. REC is attached to your account. You earn that out in Arena Commander, and that gets put in your account. What we're talking about is Alpha UEC, the play money, the monopoly money that we earn. Now, 3.0 is unique in this effect. You know, when we go from 2.5 to 2.6, they reset the database. On any large update, they reset the database for us, and we all have to start over again. However, with 3.0, it will be more than resetting the database, and you all need to be aware of this. Uh, with 3.0, you will not open up your new launcher. You will not download the patch. What you will do 
is you will delete that and you will completely do a fresh download of the entire game which will first install the Delta Patcher and the Delta Patcher will download all of it and let's say it's approximately 40 gigabytes now as an example every one of us will have to download the entire 40 gigabytes or whatever it is and we asked the devs why and they said it's because of the way the Delta Patcher will work in the future. It needs to install everything, the entire game, mm -hmm. its way. Right. So, Cosmic. yes, sir. You see that 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 red box that they were looking for was yep. in the uh, server room. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to talk. And, uh, hang on, I, I want to talk about this real quick, guys, before we get too far yeah. past it. Um, the fact that this is a part of the mission, guys. They were evidently given a mission where they had to retrieve this black box. Um, again, there's a cooperative play aspect here. Um, she's kind of protecting him from the back. She has the gun, um, but we don't know where you'll be sent for missions. Um, you may be uh, a cave. It may be a location. It may be a ship. It may be in space or on a planet surface. But this gives us a small indication of what a mission would be like. Okay, Cosmic, and You made the comment earlier that she's a newbie at this because she should be behind him. <laughs> yeah, I don't want she's anybody the covering me. Gun. She should be out front. Yeah. Right. And she, no, and she got lost, too. She yeah, she got lost, yeah, so the cover wouldn't help. And yeah, she's still in the ship and he's outside. Cosmic won't get lost. You know why? Why? I had him walk through my caterpillar so many times that now he does it by phone. <laughs> Rear Intruder, your REC will not be pointless in 3.0 and beyond. It will become useless at some point simply because REC is what you will be using to rent the, the weapons and stuff that you're using in Arena Commander and, and out in the verse. You'll still be able to do that for quite some time yet. Eventually, little by little, they will move some weapons, they will move coolers, they will move stuff from the Voyager Direct Store into the game, but only, only after that you start to earn UEC and not Alpha UEC. So yes, the wreck is, the wreck is vital at this point in time. Right. Okay, it's still it's still applicable, and it will be for some months. Right. There's something else I want to talk about too. Um, we were talking about the mission a second ago. Um, they talked about the fact that with missions, that more than one person may have a mission that is attached to your mission. So, for example, they were given the mission to go retrieve that black box, uh, and and someone else could be given either that same mission or a variation of that mission, which may cause you to realize that when you arrive there, like in this case, they arrived there was no one there. But there may have been a different situation where they may have arrived and there was another group of people that were there given a mission in some way tied into that. Um, they're trying to create this, this dynamic aspect of where not only are you just taking your own little solo mission and whatever you do affects you, but that other players can also have impact or you can have impact on other players in their mission. On the same mission. And there will be two mission givers. A lot of people think that Miles Eckhart is the good guy and bad right. guy. Not. Miles gives missions to the good guys. There's a there will be another one called Rilo, and he's the guy that gives the missions to all the bad guys. And to the best of my knowledge, it, I, it, he's going to be stationed at Grim Hex. Yeah, and you go you go see him in the bar or something. And he gives the bad guys missions. So get your what butt connection? Out there and get that thing. And what connection does he have with Miles Eckhart? That's the that's the mystery. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, this yeah. if, if, if there is one, who knows, right? We'll find out, I guess, in time. Okay, well, it's time for another commercial break. Um, here's another uh, interesting, uh, I guess, could we call this a ship? I don't know, but uh, I know a lot of people got excited by this when they saw it, so here we go. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, Archie, gotta ask you. Um, do you own an ox? Two. Two, <laughs> okay. Cosmic, you, you own an ox, right? Yes, sir, I do. I own the silver one. Ooh, so you've got, uh, oh, wow, okay, great. So let me ask you a question. Uh, this is your, and this is, we don't know yet because we haven't had a chance to mess around with them yet, but which would you prefer, the Knox or the, what's the other one called? Yellow Jacket? <laughs> Dragonfly. Uh, Dragonfly. Dragonfly. <laughs> I go for the Dragonfly because it's a utility vehicle. I got the Dragonfly specifically to put in the cargo bay of my freelancer DUR for when I go out into deep space. Uh, yeah. Okay. And because I can carry a little bit of something if I find it. I can scout planet side a little quicker. And if I have to and I'm out there with one of my buddies or two of my buddies, we can get on there with a gun and go kill the bad guy and take his junk. So let me ask you guys a question about this. And this is something that I've always wondered about. Do you feel that the second guy on a dragonfly has a lot more vulnerability versus the way the Nox is designed where it kind of has the armor that kind of comes around and encases around them so it gives them a little bit more protection. What do you think about that? Yeah, the Nox has more protection. That's true. It's made more for racing and for fighting. Okay. The Dragonfly is more of a utility. Okay, utility exploration kind of thing. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so uh, let me ask you one more question about those. Um I, in the beginning, you, when when the dragonfly was first introduced, a lot of people talked about, oh, we're going to load up this or that ship with a bunch of dragonflies, and we're going to use them for piracy. We're going to take over ships. How practical do you think that is? Do you think that there is practicality in that? Um, is it is yes. it okay? And my question is, do you think that that's going to be the way boarding parties are able to get on board ships? That's because they're not they're so small they can be picked up on the radar. Well, look I at think it this way. Let's say you disable a ship like a uh, Retaliator, a Starfarer, uh -huh. uh, whatever. Okay, you, you disable this, but you don't know who's in there, and maybe they got one of those rail guns. So you might want to back your ship off a ways out mm. of range, and then your guys can jump on three or four or five Dragon Flights and get over there faster than EVA in. You see, I think it's practical from that standpoint. Okay. You can get there and then get your get your job done and get the heck out of there a lot faster with a dragonfly or a Nox, and they got guns on them. So if somebody starts to shoot at you, you can just shoot back with your your dragonfly or your Nox. That's true. So from that point, yes, and the dragonfly is better because if you find stuff, each dragonfly can carry one cargo thing back with you, or you can one put a guy in the back of there with another gun. See, two guys per dragonfly can go over there and invade this ship. So, yeah, it's a nasty little pirate thing. Sure it is. Okay, awesome. Okay, good points. It also can use uh, for search and rescue to... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, definitely when you're on a planet getting around. I know we've got some other vehicles, but it'd be great for that. You're right. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward to our well, next video. Red Wolf ahead, says over here, a dragonfly is equal to a Harley. That's true with all the saddlebags on it. <laughs> and the Nox is like a rice rocket. <laughs> So, yeah, that's pretty much the difference, except they all got weapons on them. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and go to our next segment. This is where we get into things get a little dicey. Our, our uh, two people we've been watching, they've gotten into the uh, rover, they've gotten their pickup, and now they're going to head back to their ship, and let's see what happens. You see, Brian Chamber was very busy down there. <laughs> right. By the way, when the camera's on you, because you're looking off. You've got to remember, you're always... This is one of my favorite parts of the whole presentation. Ambush. The special effects are awesome. I can't believe they left the Constellation parked there. Uh, yeah, same here. Well, the, the pilot was in, the navigator was in there. Yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons. You know, a lot of times when you have something like that, ship may stay on the ground if they feel safe. Otherwise, they wouldn't stay on the ground just because of this. Look at that. Wow, took him out. 
you know, it's your first mission you took with Miles Oops. Eckhart and all, all that right, stuff. Well, I wouldn't have left it parked there. there. I wouldn't no. have taken it off. Well, you know a little bit how unscrupulous Miles is, though. <laughs> if somebody yeah. else doesn't know. <laughs> but when it's parked, your radar is not going to pick up enemies. That's maybe. right. But if you're up flying around, you'll be able to pick up anybody that help. approaches you. That's a good so, point. Good point. Yeah. And you have a, you have the, the advantage you can start attacking immediately. You don't have to wait to take off. Good point. I would never leave the ship landed. I would take the ship back up in the air and then wait for pickup and bring it down. I now, mean, hang on a second, guys. Hang on, hang on, hang on, guys. Leave your helicopter. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This, this, this video gives. Yeah, you I want to. I just want to talk about something that's happening here. Let's talk about the two ships, Cosmic. What are the two ships that are chasing them right now? Uh, the Cutlass Blacks. The Cutlass and another one. The Saber. Uh, Buccaneer. All oh, Buccaneer. Okay. Yep. Oh, I love this real gun. Cosmic yeah. has to have one of them. Uh, of course. <laughs> now, there's some question about whether or not uh, the, the the person who fires this gun actually nailed or whether I he got, hit the rocks. It's kind of hard to say. I got a mini rail gun right here. But that explosion was nice. Video. Oh, there it goes. Ooh, look at Archie's gun. Nice. That's my uh, mini railgun. I'm, I'm curious about what the cost of that railgun is going to be, because that's not going to be a cheap item, guarantee. 7,500 credits on the uh, Moby Glass when they bought it out in Levski. Ooh. Wow. That sounds whether still kind of cheap to me. I don't know if that's going to stay. <laughs> whether that's a placeholder or not, I don't know, but that's yeah, what I, I, I if, if it's only seven grand, that's that that's spooky. Uh, Jolly wants to know, will we have an automated orbit set for our ship from Moby Glass mm. so we don't have to have a person bring it into safety? Yeah, they have that in Elite. In Elite, you can actually have your ship take off when you go on the ground on your rover. Um, you can actually tell it to go up into orbit and stand by and, and then call it back. It would. It's an interesting feature, but the reason why I think, Jolly, that may not happen is because Chris is really big on this, again, where we don't get to a point where we're doing solo play, you know, where you have other people that are helping you. Uh, I think it's a real emphasis on that. I, th I think it would be a cool thing, don't get me wrong, uh, and maybe they will at, at some point bring something like that, but I really think he really wants it to be. If you're going multi-crew, just like they had this guy sitting in the ship, he was sitting there, you know, he didn't leave the ship. Um, and that's what would happen, you know, in real life to a certain degree. Yeah, I agree with you. It, it's going to be more multi-crew than automated. Absolutely. There's another great take out there. Uh, missile lock. And Took bam, he's dead. Yeah. Now this is the part that nobody expected. We knew something nice was going to happen. I think uh, I remember a lot of people when they first saw this ship in the distance, they thought it was a Reclaimer because we'd seen video of the Reclaimer and we'd seen some pretty solid video showing that they were really close to being finished with it. But we were surprised by this. And when I saw the angle in the front, I knew it was the uh, the Idris. They're talking about the automated orbit and that. Uh, I do know that big ships like the 890 Jump are made so you can leave them in orbit. Right. And then you can get on your little luxury mm -hmm. limit. And come down. X-85 and go down to the planet and back up again. It's just, but you can't call the ship down. You have to travel up and down to the ship. Yes, Rear, they started out with 125,000 credits. We don't know if that's a placeholder or not, or if we get it. We hope we get it, or you're not going to be playing long. Because of Idris? Well, yeah. Well, that Idris is not. I mean, I'm not complaining. You know, Montoya got lost on a star fair. Can you imagine how long it's going to take him to find the bridge on an Idris? <laughs> I mean, he didn't get to read my little diagram oh. that I made. When that guy's running around the Idris, man, I'm like, wow. Hey, you see, the Idris has a, 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 a like, specific no, look these, of it. The, you know, the angles in the back. Away. 
That's that's when I knew it was an interest because I looked at the angles. Archie Montoya said he got lost reading your diagram. <laughs> oh, get out of here. <laughs> that's why he's glorious leader. Oh, okay. <laughs> there was something interesting too about this. Um, well, first of all, just seeing the Idris was amazing, and I I love the physics that they use in it, where the ship is not fast. Um, it's a very large ship. Um, you, you can see the way it's descending even now. Um, you know, this is not going to be something that you're going to move in and move out very quickly. And I think for those who own those ships, um, you know, a lot of times we think about, well, I'm going to take my Idris out and do blah, 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 blah. But you have to think about risk versus reward, uh, opportunity. Um, not only that, escorts. Um, very big ship, very powerful ship, very sturdy ship. But still, you're going to think twice about taking it out. Excuse me, Griff. This sure. is a perfect time in the video right now for you to be talking about what you were been talking about earlier, multi-crew and landing these big ships. Yes, yes. We talked about the fact that if you had a ship like this, think of people who even today when you have a large cruise ship, there are multiple cameras on that ship. There are people at different ends of the ship with communicating, telling the pilot how close he is and, and how much further he is before he docks and lands. There's going to have to be that same type of thing with this ship even, uh, where you've got eyes. I know we can go third person, but even going third person on this ship, I can't imagine that you can see everything. So your pilots who are escorting you, maybe somebody who's on, on another location can tell you, bring her down, bring her down, you know, 100 feet, 10 feet, or meters or whatever before you're touching ground. Yeah, a little right. forward, a little to the left, mm -hmm. you know. Get it on flat level terrain or something. Absolutely. But you got two ships there. You got a rover. You got somebody here on the ground. Mm -hmm. You got lots of people to communicate via their Moby comms to tell the pilot what to do and where to go, just like yeah. in real life. And I, when you talked about that earlier, you know, I thought, yeah, so why didn't they the do that? Is, uh, the pilot's kind of flying. You know he's in third person probably mm -hmm. flying. Yeah, and that's why he's in, on unlevel terrain when the ramp comes down. Right. All he had to do was land just a little bit more forward. Mm -hmm. I yeah. like the ship just pointing at him, hovering there. Yeah. And there are a lot of people, by the way, who talked about this issue of the ships, uh, whether they were actually flying correctly within the atmosphere of the planet. And it was mentioned that the atmospheric flight, for those who played 3.0 at GamesCon, those people who sat down at the actual computers, they said that the atmospheric flight mechanic was there for those ships. It was only in this demonstration that we did not see that. So they said that don't think that these ships are necessarily just hovering like as if there was zero gravity. They said in the game, at Gamescom, those people who did dem play the demos said that there was atmospheric effects on the ships. It was only in this that we didn't see that. Yes. Um, Meyer, in fact, Meyer of Test, made a comment about that once when he was flying the the uh, the prospector, the prospector has no wings on it, and when he was flying it, he mm -hmm. says it flies very very nice, but when you're at a very slow speed getting ready to land, it is like Unstable. flying a stack of bricks, mm -hmm. and he had actually ended up landing it on its nose because mm -hmm. it was so hard to control because you were using the thrusters, you had to do it very slowly, very minutely. So ships like that, yeah, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Op Chief, we see your question here. He's asking, will different types of cargo bring with them different volatility? Like, for example, if you have something that's a hazardous material uh, versus something that's just basic resources. I, I don't know, Cosmic, have you heard anything about that? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And, let, and before, and before we answer that question, I just want to highlight real quick in the video, you guys noticed that the rover got destroyed. Um, the guy who was piloting yeah, the Idris tried to reposition ramp. it, and the ramp came down on the rover. Uh, the rover was already damaged from firefighting, and that was enough to destroy the rover. So be aware of that, guys, that, you know, something as simple as that could destroy a ship that you're in. I'm Gordon Cosmic, I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely there will be different types of material, liquid, hazardous. There's different containers, different shapes of containers. Uh, when they say standard cargo unit, they're actually talking about that rectangular box. But you'll have all kinds of containers. Uh like nuclear, you know, nuclear stuff, liquid, 
well, all kinds. And a lot of these ships, uh, you know, you got the hatch in the back. You could open that up and scoot some of the stuff out that way if you had to. Some of the ships, you could just exit it right out the side. The Constellation Taurus, as an example, has a quick way to eject cargo. One of that is to get rid of hazardous material if it's going to detonate, you know, if it's become volatile, or the pirate attacks, you just want to give them a, some of your cargo to, leave, to, to let you alone. That's been addressed in that pirate video, by the way. Uh, so yeah, there will be all kinds of material. If you followed the lore, there's one material out there in the verse that is so volatile, and there's only one location that, that has it. There's another location that needs it, and only one. And you have to traverse the entire width, basically, pretty close, of the verse to carry the stuff. It is so volatile that when you come out of a jump gate into a system, you must broadcast on your communication that you are there and that you're carrying this stuff because nobody's going to get within a third of the system of where you're at. Because if your ship detonates, it will take out 25% of the system. Okay, let's uh, stop here for a second. Uh, I want to talk about what's happening in the video here. Um, they've just boarded the Idris. The Idris has taken off and it's heading back into space. Uh, one of the cool things that we see here is the Idris with its landing gear down, and we also see that it, it works as a VTOL ship, vertical takeoff and landing, and we get to see the right. engines rotate back into position. And of course, uh, the vapor trails that are coming off of it are, are, are amazing. That's a good looking ship too, the Idris. It is, it is. This is the first time we see this. Uh they show us how the edges is going to operate. What do you figure that yellow window looking thing is on the back? Any, any idea? I don't know. That's, I've been uh, wondering about that. I don't know. It looks like an observation. Observation. I love the bridge and the thing too. It's yeah. Really done well. It was also interesting to see how long it took him to get to the bridge. He was not walking to the bridge. He was running to the bridge. And it took a quite ship. a while for him to get through the ship. Absolutely. Rear intruder, I can't remember the name of the material. I'd have to go back and look through my research notes. It's been a while since I talked about it. Uh, I can't wait to start so, working uh, on my full uh, diagram for the edges. Okay, um, wow. What can we say about the Idris? Uh, Archie, again, Griffin. you do own one, right? Yes, I do. You taking the? They say your audio is crackling a bit. Is it acting up again? Okay, guys, I appreciate you letting me know. We go through this all the time. It gets halfway through and it gets up, but we'll see if we can get it fixed again. Uh, we're gonna take a break for a commercial, and let's see. Let me see what we got. A little the next thing we're looking at. We're oh, going to the, this is uh, one of Archie's favorite. Oh yeah, here we go. Let's take oh, a quick too. look. Okay, let's take a quick look. Hang on. The rework on this is gorgeous. I can't wait to see the rest of them. What happened to Archie's picture? What a beautiful ship. Look at the turret. Yeah, that's the uh, observation turret. Very nice. It's a science station. They did a real good job with the rework, in my opinion. I cannot wait to see my Taurus. That's the uh, the the rover up 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 front. I wish they had done a little bit more, um, you know, because we're kind of familiar with the constellation. I wish we got to see a little bit more. One of the major changes I saw was that sensor package on the top of the ship, where before it was not manned. Um, in the original video uh, animations they showed us, it was just sensors that opened up when that came out. But now 
there's a person up there and if you look he's got several view screens in the cockpit with him so evidently the operator is, is Archie mentioned his observation here but that's where the person who's doing sensing stuff is doing it actually from that turret which is kind of interesting yeah also it's a good time to mention anybody who bought the 600i you will be getting a loner IKEA in the game and two days ago Heckler accidentally discovered that uh, oh I'm, I'm sorry if you own a Carrick you'll be getting a, a constellation of key as a loader in the game until the Carrick's flyable but what Heckler discovered accidentally is right after we bought the 600i instantly in our hangar and in the hangar only you can now call up a constellation of Kia the original model before this rework which whereas we couldn't do that until we bought the 600i right good point good point so if you'd like to see a constellation of key in your hangar and you never did before you got a 600i you can do that now all right well we're almost there guys uh this is going to be probably the last segment and then we've got a couple other things to cover at the end so guys hang in there we've got something really good for you coming up uh but this is uh the part that no one was really expecting and this was it was one thing to see one idris right archie but what about scene two Ah, oh, that's going to be the Battle of the Battles. Now, the flyable one is the Idris P, but the uh, uh, the M, that's the one that, that has the uh, gun in the front. Well, this one has the gun, the real gun, too. But oh, I think so the one one it one is it one it comes with it. The other one I think it has optional, right? Uh, uh, Cosmic. I, I don't know that much about the Idris. So Those of you Idris lovers out there, let us know what the deal is. I thought that the M comes with it, and the P is the one you can add it to. Yeah, you guys in chat, let us know. So I'm gonna give you exactly one chance. And by the way, the reason that the that the Idris got blowed up so quick is that, that they decided not to have shields on them. Otherwise, they said it would have taken over an hour. Right. And a lot of people thought, they said, oh, wow, those ships went down too quick, and that's the Idris. But you're absolutely right, Cosmic. They they decided not to use shields for the demonstration. And one, of, one of the devs told us it would have taken between 30 and 60 minutes to take down an Idris with them if they had shields on it. It's not something they're going to take down real quick. Well, with me, it probably would take longer. Thanks, Jolly. Yeah, thanks, Joe. I love when we see the front doors of the Idris open right here, and then we get to see the jet fighters scramble up from outside. That is so awesome. Is it three jet fighters or two? There's just two in there. But can it fit three? That's my question. Not sure what the uh, complement is. Knows that? To my knowledge, you can put four fighters in your suit for it, say for gladius. Because there was plenty of room to park more than two in there. Yeah. It looks like you could fit a, a Connie in there. You can fit four of them in there pretty easy. Now you can Maybe. see them using the rail gun. Uh, <laughs> you can definitely see that blue beam coming from it. Also, guys, we also found out that there is a, um, a, um, a, a certain time frame if you drop your shields, it takes about, um, I think they said a minute and 30 seconds for shields to come back at full uh, level. So there's going to have to be some consideration as to when to drop shields and when to raise them because in order to fire the rail gun, you have to drop your shields. You know, that right. beam coming out of there almost looks like the uh, beam out of Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Your auto dock would be nice. Maybe they will develop that eventually. But here we can see both the Idris. Auto and manual docking on the ships, particularly the bigger ships, will be a thing. Just like where they showed you the video of putting the dragonfly on the cutlass, the auto dock thing there. Oh yeah, that's right. There she goes. I love this explosion. This was whoever came up with this, it's great. Some explosion, huh? 
For what it's worth to anybody that owns one of these or is interested in piloting or crewing it, I had a chit chat with somebody uh, yesterday that flew one of these uh, at GamesCon, and he said it flies beautifully. Just thought I'd point it out. Gee, thanks. Now, I, the video cuts here, guys, and we actually get to see them bring uh, those ships in, uh, the Gladiuses, into the bay. Yeah, this is awesome, isn't it? Yeah, we did a little editing to kind of speed up the thing here. Okay. Yeah, I don't see the... I don't see the uh, landing assist. But well, they're not using. They're doing it manually now. Yeah, right. it's all manual. But like Cosmic said, you can easily see where four could fit in there without a problem. Yeah. Archie, the guys flying these two ships are the QA guys. These guys yeah. know what they're doing. They right. do this all day, every day. <laughs> no, no, because for the, 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 the for the audience out there, yeah. there will be the uh, landing assist eventually. Oh yeah, absolutely. Nice ship, isn't it? Yeah. Just like when you're coming to Port Olisar, the, the the landing pad lights up and there's a beam shoots and you, up. And you do know that there when you're on like the Idrosat right, Squadron squad 42, okay. this landing bay is going to have NPCs running around. One yeah. guy will be there flagging you in a little this way, a little this way. Stop Carry there, lower yeah, a little bit. Finish, just like on an aircraft carrier. Thanks, it, this thing's going to be full of NPCs. People there to refuel you, repair you. They're going to be running all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the guys that uh, handle weapons, the guys that handle the fuel... The mechanics. Yeah, you just have the whole feel. Chiefs. Yeah, you have the whole feeling of activity, you know, around you. Like right now, we don't have that, but we even just saw with Levski. Even though you know they're still working on it, the NPCs walking around made the place feel alive, and the ships will be the same way, which will be very, very cool. Okay, well, listen, we have gotten through all of the Gamescom piece except for one thing, and this one we saved for the very end because a lot of people were completely blown away by it oh, so yeah. let's take a look and a lot of people were unblown away after reading Q&A <laughs> that's so true <laughs> fair and balanced both sides yeah I love my exploration one though I love my luxury one Now they, we're going to be able to buy the module yes. for the other one. Eventually. Yeah, they said eventually. Mm -hmm. So if you own one, you'll be able to adjust it in your hangar the way you want to use it for that particular uh, time you're where's, playing. Where's the commercial? It's coming. What does it take to build a symphony? Yeah, I've waited for months for this mid-size Exploration 600 thing, and Four it's, movements it's what I expected key. and what I wanted, so yeah, I'm happy with it. Tempo, and the arrangement of musical notes that will create harmonies. You know, it's not a fight. Melodies. No, it's not. Now, the laboratory that orchestra. we've seen, they're making a, uh, a miniature size. Um, like a demonstration. Yeah, a model. Yeah, a model. Yeah. When I mean, you go to buy a ship at the ship dealer out in the verse, they're not going to have a Master real ship set in the craft. building. They're going to have models. Yeah. So, Working in perfect yeah. unity. And those are the models that they give us to, to transform in notes hangers. into sound. Whatever, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and those sounds into an experience. Yeah. yeah. Charlie, I thought the commercial was phenomenal. Um, they, they just did a great job with it. But most of all, our buddy Heckler has watched the part where it takes off. I don't know how many times he loves the sound. A feeling so powerful that when it transcends it words. Flying out of there. The sound is really it must awesome. be conveyed in Especially another form. Especially you have five in the world, six in the world. Sound Introducing the new 600i from Origin. Five and one, but symphony. My headset is just right in motion. Go ahead, Cosby.
See your authorized origin dealer for details. Yeah, the sound is awesome. I love the fact that they have uh, underneath there a proud sponsor of GamesCon. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Oh, well, we have uh, gotten through uh, our GamesCon. 2947. Uh, special edition today. And, uh, guys, I really appreciate you guys uh, hanging in here with us today. Um, we covered a lot of ground. Thanks for all the questions you guys gave us. Um, Archie, as always, thank you. Cosmic, as always, again, thank you. Um, we do have one little presentation that we want to gift to you guys. Um, many of you who are watching us are part of Test Squadron. And uh, Test Squadron, I, you know, if you're not a Test Squadron member, definitely invite you to join up with us. Um, Test Squadron welcomes uh, anybody, well, just about anybody. If you have any sense about you, don't you can't join Test Squadron. But if you're funny and crazy and like to have fun, Test Squadron is definitely the org that you want to be a part of. Um, Test Squadron members, for you, this video is for you. We made this especially for you. We want you to uh, record this video when you get a chance. We want you to, uh, anytime you're landing on a planet, we want you to think of this as Test Squadron's theme song. Um, again, enjoy it, and we will see you guys hopefully next month. And hopefully, 3.0 will be out. What do you guys think? Archie, what's your bet? 3.0 will be out, we think, when we get together next time? Yes. Cosmic, what's your vote? Uh, between Eva Cardi and PTU testing, I think it'll go live definitely before CitizenCon. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Also, I put the link to the organization Test Squadron page if you'd like to find out more about Test Squadron, and if you'd definitely like to join the the join button, there's a there's a surprise there if you click join button. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Cosmic. Guys, thanks again for hanging out with us. Enjoy this uh, last piece of video, and we will see you guys first weekend in October. Peace. Okay, We're gone. Last weekend. Last, okay, it's last weekend. Okay, bye. Well, CitizenCon is last weekend. <laughs>